Thanks, Riaz. Good morning. More than two dozen homes have been lost at a huge wildfire burning in the southern interior. The fire west of Rock Creek is now 3,750 hectares in size. Hundreds of people were forced from their homes on Friday. Some have been allowed back, but others remain under an evacuation order. Hundreds of campers who were made to leave the Kettle River Provincial Park without their belongings are slowly being escorted back to the site. More than 100 firefighters are battling the flames. It's believed this fire was started by a cigarette. The roar of it, the, 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 just the massive roar. I, uh, so it was like a convoy of tanks coming through there, just the noise. And somebody else had said that the sight of it and that, and it is staggering in pictures. You know, you see the height, you see a distance from the trees, it's 50 feet above the trees and that, which it was going through the park. Another two wildfires continue to burn in B.C.'s wine country. Around 100 people living in Oliver had to leave their homes. Gusts of up to 90 kilometers per hour have helped fan these flames. Crews say they are getting a handle on the fires to the north and south of the town. The fires remain uncontained, but weather conditions have improved. Planes fighting the fires from the air had to be temporarily grounded yesterday because of drones flying in the area. A man is expected in court this morning charged in connection with the deaths of three people in Pemberton. In May, a car slammed into two cyclists on Highway 99, Kelly Blunden and Ross Chafe, both members of the Whistler Cycling Club. They were killed in the crash. The vehicle's passenger, Paul Pierre Jr., was also killed in the accident. Samuel Alec is now facing a string of charges, including impaired driving, causing death. A man has been charged with murder after a stabbing on Vancouver's downtown east side. 47-year-old Dominic Botang suffered a fatal stab wound on August 8th on East Hastings near Main Street. Police have charged 34-year-old Dennis Slate home with a second-degree murder. Officers believe the stabbing was targeted. A former KGB agent has voluntarily left Canada after spending six years living in a Vancouver church to avoid deportation. Mikhail Lenikov's lawyer says his client ended negotiations with the Canada Border Services Agency and is no longer in the country. Canadian authorities declare Lenikov a threat to national security because of his work in the 1980s as a translator for the Soviet Security and Spy Agency. In 1999, he confessed to his role in the KJB. Lenikov said he did his work under pressure from his superiors, but he was still ordered deported to Russia in 2009. A group of Vancouver activists is dead serious about opposing Kinder Morgan's proposed pipeline and tanker project. Protesters staged a so-called die-in in English Bay, pretending to die from exposure to toxic chemicals they say could result from an oil spill. The group headed by the Sierra Club BC says it wants to demonstrate the risk associated with the controversial oil project. The association says the event was inspired by a computer simulation commissioned by Metro Vancouver and the Sailwatooth First Nation. It showed how airborne toxins could spread in the event of a spill in Burrard Inlet. People of Vancouver deserve better. We realized that within an hour, the response times have been poor. We had the example of the Mithrasa this spring. You have an hour to evacuate people before this benzene starts to affect their health. And there are long-term effects that weren't even listed in this report. We see what happened with people who were cleaning up in Kalamazoo at the BP spill. The bitumen dis it will persist in the environment for a long time to come, and those kind of cancers and birth-related uh, illnesses, we, we can't allow that to happen right in Metro Vancouver. Tomorrow is the deadline for people to respond in writing to the National Energy Board's draft conditions for Kinder Morgan's proposed Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. The company has until Thursday to file written arguments to the Energy Board. People living in East Vancouver are rallying against a tower proposed for commercial drive. The No Tower Coalition says the 12-story building is too big for the neighborhood. A balloon tower was raised to show just how high the building would be in Woodland Park. It's being planned by Bafo Developments and the Kettle Friendship Society, who support those living with mental illnesses. The proposed building at Venables and Commercial would provide new space for the Kettle Society as well as an estimated 200 condos. They're talking about 200 units, a big amount of uh, units in a, in a footprint that would cover the entire Venables and 
and commercial block, um, and it's it's uh, it would be um, market price condominiums uh, that wouldn't do nothing for affordability in our neighborhood. It's overcrowded and inadequate. It's getting old, and we have this opportunity to build some desperately needed social space as well as some affordable housing units for our clients. 